I'd like for you to comment on the background of Vice President George Bush and his uh, membership in the, the secret society called Skull and Bones. Well, all I can say is, you know, people have written about this, and the Skull and Bones is a secret order of, of Yale, and then the uh, proposition is that people uh, are there groomed for the Trilateral Commission and the CFR, and therefore they will then be in uh, positions of great influence in our government, and I think that's uh, safe to say, and I think they admitted to those members who belong, because uh, I think they're very proud of it. There's nothing very secret about it, and whether or not you have a Jimmy Carter or Ronald Reagan, the key appointments, whether they're at the Federal Reserve or State Department or Treasury Department or wherever, they come from this elite group of people who serves the North the Eastern establishment and the banking community. Code? I wish there were something secret I could manifest. 322? Secret number? Uh, there are all kinds of secrets, Tim. You were both in Skull and Bones, the secret society. It's so secret we can't talk about it. What does that mean for America? The conspiracy theorists are going to go on. I don't know. I haven't seen the red number. Number 322. Okay, you have the doorway here. Yeah. Okay, then to the right, you have a hedge, and yeah. then you have um, an evergreen tree. If you follow yeah. that line straight back, courtyard's in there. Ah, okay. so, so that's where they have the ceremonies in there. The outdoor part of it. Part of it was indoors. We only got to see the outdoor part. Right. We only got to and, and to listen to the actor part. God only knows what went on indoors. And what did you hear? What, what was it you know? You managed to get this unique Oh, accent. it was just, it was gross. I mean, they were pretending to murder people. What was the tone of it though? Was it was it jokey it's or was just, it quite No, it wasn't jokey at all. It was it was sick. It's about the only thing to describe it. It was sick. What you're hearing is the first recording ever made of the Skull and Bones initiation ceremony. It has never been broadcast before. Fifteen new members of the club are being introduced into the macabre rituals of Skull and Bones by the senior students who are about to graduate. The club has what some might see as a strange fascination with death, skulls and bones. There's the chance too Difficult to hear first of all, but including the devil equals death, death equals death. Although little else is known about what goes on inside the tomb, it's widely reported that members, including George W.'s grandpappy, grave robbed the famous Native American Apache leader Geronimo, taking his skull and some of his bones. As if the trail of tears and genocide of Native Americans wasn't offensive enough, these rich mofos actually have bragged about desecrating his grave and doing God knows what with his skull. Vile. Sadly, the descendants of Geronimo have been trying to get his remains back for years. They've actually filed a lawsuit against Skull and Bones on the 100th anniversary of his death. But the appeal fell on deaf ears and Skull and Bones came out victorious. According to Yale Daily News, officials cannot be forced to permit Geronimo's descendants to remove his remains and relocate them. Because apparently it's perfectly okay to steal dead bodies as long as you never give them back. And if you know anything about Native American tradition, then you know how offensive it is to trap the spirit of Geronimo in such a dark and disturbing place. According to the Scotsman, a Scottish newspaper, initiates must masturbate in a coffin while recounting their sexual exploits, for which they will be rewarded with a no-strings-attached gift of $15,000. Wow, masturbating in a coffin must have been pretty awkward for Bush if his dad was present. But hey, maybe we can expect some naked coffin selfies from him soon. Although little else is known about what goes on inside the tomb, Thank you. 